So I have a kind of a mismatch, mishmash of stuff to share to, with you um, on this video. I like I did on my live video. I did put, put pin my uh, email address for anybody who wants to send me information anonymously or even not anonymously that they'd like to add to the conversation in the video. But I did get uh, some anonymous information over the last 24 hours that um, is directly related to this case. Welcome to an episode of Left Undone Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. This is part 13 in the Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell saga, and insider scoop information I've received anonymously. And someone close to Lori and Chad forwarded something that they had. And I, I'm sorry to be so vague, but these people have asked me to not reveal who they are because obviously, I mean, we're talking about people dying and death and threatens to kill people and children missing. You don't, you know, it's pretty I mean, it's just something that you don't want to just go out there and stand up and say, you know, especially if you're in their circle, right? So there was a forward um, about Chad and he did, since they've been gone, did reach out and communicate about what's happening to someone that is his friend. And basically the friend and him, well, some people... Now, I don't know who the friend is, okay? I don't know who the friend is, and I don't even know who the person that sent it to, to me is um, that was sent from somebody that knows them. Okay, so let's picture that. Let's picture this. Chad has a friend. Chad sent email to a friend. The friend spoke about it and shared it with someone else, and then that person shared it with the person that sent it to me. So it kind of trickles down a couple layers. So... But um, again, I do question the people that afford me information and what I've gotten so far makes a lot of sense when you look at it in the big scheme of things. So I'm not just posting or reporting or videoing um, about just random accusations of people that have no idea what's going on. These I have been able to validate that they are real people that are close. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about that. So I'm just going to generalize what the what the conversation was about. But basically, Chad has gone on and to say, um, you know, um, that he um, has rejected Julie's beliefs and that people are linking him to Julie, but he thinks that's ridiculous because he's rejected Julie's belief. Julie Rowe. He is adamant that him and Lori are silent and they've been silent since the beginning. He said his lawyers have told him to not speak. He said he's waiting for the legal mess to settle down and then he'll he'll be back in their community and the in their good graces, whatever. Okay? Or they they th- they're convinced, I guess is more the word, that law enforcement, FBI included, they're looking for an opportunity to justify all the time and money that they have spent. So that's their that's their excuse that why this is continuing to go on, that it's simply a custody battle, and that um, they're they need to the Law enforcement needs to justify it, you know, because now it's become this huge media circus and everything else. And I feel like once the autopsy results are released, they're going to be vindicated. And Chad's followers feel like this is what, what will happen too. So to them, Chad's just tucked away with Lori on an island, being silent because lawyers told them to be quiet. And they're going to be vindicated as soon as the 
autopsy report to come back and then everything is going to be honky dory. That's how I interpreted the information I got. But, you know, that that makes perfect sense. Of course, Chad's going to think like, oh, they're just after me, you know, the FBI and law enforcement, you know, Kay and Larry started this circus about these kids missing and now everybody's going off the crazy train thinking we're just these terrible people. So we just flew to a little island to enjoy each other and our company and, and, you know, and, and, um, you know, it'll blow over law enforcement, you know, just being really annoying, but that's what they do because they have to justify, you know, an end to the means or means to the end or whatever that. So just more BS. I'm sorry, because my opinion. All right, Chad, people are dead, 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 dead. Children are missing, missing. Children are missing. So whatever you want to play the little victim out there that has to hide out in Hawaii and be quiet because your lawyer's told you to be quiet until autopsy reports come back, give me a break. Like, seriously? I, I, I won't drink your Kool-Aid, but I'm sure there are people that have. And you know what's happening? People drink the Kool-Aid. You know what happens, right? They wind up never having another sip again. Now... Different subject. So I got another piece of information that was provided to me, again, through a different source. And um, a lot of this is really bothersome um, because this is not the teachings of LDS, right? Okay, I'm just going to kind of list this out of what I was told. So this is not about according to people that know the inside scoop on all this, this is not about a custody issue, even though they are trying to spin it that way. Okay, this is not a custody issue. This is about gathering the 144,000. Lori has told more than just Charles that they will be killed if they get in her way. Chad and Lori went in a private setting with people like Julie Rowe, etc., and they, in these private settings, they teach false doctrines. They teach things that are not along the lines of LDS. And again, things they could be excommunicated for teaching. What they do is they do that and then they back it up with scripture. So people believe it's true. And in the mind of these people that are very concerned about the fact that they're do, what they're doing is extremely wrong. They also believe that this is very cultish. This is a cult, okay? And whether you are part of the branches of preparing people or others, I have gotten email from a couple people that are even on that other side of things, not mainstream, but they also believe that this is wrong, what Lori and Chad are doing, and that it is evil and it is not what they're teaching okay like they they're even like okay we're a spinoff but Lori and Chad are way over there spun off and is completely against anything not mainstream not the more not like I said not mainstream or not even the unorthodox Mormon so um I received some information anonymously from somebody that said they grew up LDS and they're still LDS but they identify more as an unorthodox Mormon they explain that there's mainstream LDS, but there are mainly many varieties of unorthodox LDS, such as the people who tend to associate with Julie Rowe, Chad Daybell, and many others. You know, and, and they point out that every religion has these types, which I, is completely true. Um, but they do believe that the information that I provided in the email I received matches a lot of things that they have heard from some of the unorthodox LDS circles. Um, there's also, uh, you know, not just the prayer hearing people, but there's also other non-mainstream LDS circles. And usually it's the ones that get more into the new age doctrines that talk about things similar to what has been alleged about Lori Vallow's beliefs. Um, and this person basically suggests they're an unorthodox LDS. 
um, and they do believe in more controversial things than the mainstream LDS, they said even they would say that Daybell and Vallow have gone to the extreme in their beliefs off the deep end. Okay, so even people that are on a different, I don't know, how do you say, a spectrum of LDS, even the raised LDS, but they're more of an unorthodox LDS, they too believe that what Chad and Laurie are doing is way beyond what even the unorthodox LDS do. So back to what I was saying about the other information I was saying. So they teach false doctrines um, and they're cultish, okay? They would do this even before Tammy died is what they said it was happening. Lori and Chad were involved in these teachings, false doctrines before Tammy ever died. They have a big concern about the thing, the talk about the portals and the closets, the energy healing. Um, and then like the dark and light energy, um, they, that is not okay in their book. Like Chad says that they, he, they're part of this dark and light, you know, reading prophets and apostles. Um, apparently, Chad has a book with names and numbers of the people that he was before. Um, and so what was said or told is Chad and Lori believe that they, specifically the two of them, are in charge of this whole thing of gathering these 144,000. We're Chad and Lori, and we are the king and queen of gathering 144,000. That's the way I'm taking it, right? And um, it's causing, as we know, families to break up. People are divorcing. Look at Milani and Brandon and her going, you know, running off this way and that way um, to get married to someone else right away. And then a lot of people say these marriages are quick because if anything does come of it, they can't be forced to testify against each other. But what people don't know is you can't be forced to testify against each other, but you can choose to. So at any time, these people can turn on each other. It's not that they're not allowed. They can. And honestly, they probably will when they're behind bars, I would think. So yeah, they're running off because they're like, oh, then we can't testify against each other. But, you know, right now in their lava land, they might not want to. But when when this SH, you know what, gets real, they may turn on each other because that's what people do. That's human nature. Okay, so I'm not that concerned about the fact that they got married to avoid talking. Because, you know, there's, there's, law enforcement isn't stupid, you know. Um, look at um, Christopher Watts. They got him to crack. He wasn't going to crack. So, you know, I mean, hopefully that's what it'll come down to in the long run, especially if these children are dead, they're going to turn on each other and the truth is going to come out. So they think they are the king and queen of finding the 144,000. I'm Chad, I'm Lori, and welcome to the selection. Like, um, anyway, so yeah, I'm, this is the Chad and Lori world, and you guys are all just living in it, and if you're lucky, you'll get to stay, but if you're not, you're going to have to go, okay? Okay, thanks. Why is Lori thinking she's so special she doesn't need to wear the garments? Um, they also think... As far as if they, um, you know, screw up along the way, that they, it's okay. If they get excommunicated, it's not a big deal because you're just going to fix it the next time around. You know, that's this life. It's a life's lesson. It's journey, your journey in your spirit, you know, of eternity or whatever. I'm just kind of blabbing. Um, but they feel like, excommunicate us. We don't care. We'll be back and we can do it again next time. The other thing that is very offensive is that they are using the, you know, their holy temple um, to do things that are not God's work. Um, they, from what I was told in the communications I'm getting, that this is taught in the LDS church over and over and over and over again that you do not do that. And apparently it's just 
whatever to Chad and Lori, right? Because they're more special than anybody. Um, being sealed be- before death, mm-mm. that also, you know, Tammy wasn't even dead and they're saying they were sealed already. So that is not, that's not okay either. Um, and then they also just want people to know that if you're starting to believe this stuff and you are a member of the church, that you probably need to go talk to somebody in your church, you know, bishop. Um, and then the other thing that they um, you know, do, and this came from more than one person, this part, is these visions and stuff that these Julie Rowe and Chad talk about, you know, because of their near-death experience and all these visions. Consensus is if you have those kind of experiences, this is something that's personal and you're not supposed to go around blabbing and making money off of it, okay? That is a gift. So it shouldn't be shared. And here's a clip of a recent interview with Tylee's aunt. And um, she is Joseph Ryan's sister, Tylee's dad's sister. So Tylee's aunt. This is how Annie knew her former sister-in-law, Lolo, Lori Vallow Daybell. Very loving and doting mother. Speaking with us from New York City, Annie Cushing explains Lori married Annie's brother, Joe Ryan. The couple had a daughter together, Tylee. In 2018, when Joe died from a heart attack, years after his divorce from Lori, Annie went to visit the mother and daughter. This change in Lori's personality was, was definitely a new thing. A change that she says included Lori saying negative things to Tylee about her father weeks after his death, lying to Annie about things, and talking about the end of times. Annie says she texted her daughter bothered. I said, I I think Lolo may be a sociopath. I'm not in the habit of just randomly calling people sociopaths. Just over a year later, Lori's husband and Tylee's stepfather, Charles Vallow, died, shot and killed by Lori's brother, Alex Cox. Tylee and her brother, JJ, Lori's adopted son, went missing in Idaho two months after that. I felt like from the beginning, you know, the chances of these kids being found alive were, you know, most likely pretty remote. This private investigator says Charles and Lori's family members hired him after Charles died. Tylee certainly was a witness to Charles shooting, and if anybody knows what really happened. If there is a different story to tell, it could have been Tylee t- to tell that story. Does that have anything to do with why she is missing? I certainly hope not. She's just a really brilliant, you know, creative girl who deserved a chance. With new developments like Lori abandoning a storage unit with her kids' belongings and the CBS News report that police found Tylee's cell phone with Lori, Annie wonders what happened to the woman she loved like her own sister. Thanks for watching. This has been an episode of Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Graphic art and design by R.L. Speak. And my sources, Fox 13 at Salt Lake City, East Idaho News, and Cushing, and Facebook group, Christmas Mystery, Tylee Ryan, and Joshua Vallow, Gone Without a Trace. Thanks again, and I will upload a video soon.